Hi, welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be sharing some of my current favorite things. I have a few mom things and some homeschool things. So if you enjoy this type of content, please remember to subscribe and let's get into it. Okay, <laughs> I just did a favorites video. It was just over a month ago. And I had mentioned that I like favorites videos. I think they're fun to watch and I like putting them out, but I'm also not really great at like thinking of things that are my favorite. I'm just like, oh, I'll use this. I don't really care. I'm not like super passionate about them. And I'm also usually not buying a whole lot of new things either. So I can't have new favorites that way. Well, I started making a list because I was like, maybe if I just make a list as I go along, it'll be much easier. <laughs> and then I already had like a pretty good list. So I was like, wow, I have stuff to share already. So we may go another month between this and another favorites. We may go another six months, we'll see. But I think like making a list as I go makes it a little easier for me to remember things that I actually was enjoying instead of trying to think back and remember. So that's what I'm gonna share with you today. We're gonna start with some of the mom things and then I just have a couple homeschool things to share with you towards the end. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna share with you is clothing. I pulled over my handy dandy chair here that's holding my clothing. So I got this shirt off of Amazon. My goal in getting these shirts was I don't have a whole lot of like dressy short sleeve shirts. So as we came out of winter and stuff, I was like, okay, what am I supposed to wear to church with my skirts? I wear a lot of skirts. I don't, I haven't found dresses that I really like or that fit my body shape very well, at least that I think do. So I usually wear like a shirt and a skirt to church. And I just had a lot of sweaters and long sleeve, warmer, warmer, colder weather, <laughs> warm things for colder weather. And so I needed something besides t-shirts. <laughs> so I just started looking through Amazon one day and found a few different ones. There's still a few that I'm trying. I wouldn't say they're my favorites. I still like them, but I'm just sharing the ones that I like the most. So I got this one and I like a longer sleeve. My arms are bigger and my shoulders are broader. So sometimes having a little bit of a longer sleeve doesn't accentuate that factor and it makes it look a little bit better. So I really like this shirt. I got it in several colors, so that's what I'm gonna show you. And I even put it on. I was wearing a different shirt and I was like, well, if I'm sharing these, I should probably be wearing it. So I got a gray one and then I got a black one because if you like something, just get a whole bunch of colors in it. Okay, you can't go wrong. So I got a black one and then I don't do a whole lot of bright colors. I like blues and greens and stuff. So I got a yellow one <laughs> and I wore this on Easter cause it's very happy like spring color. So I like this, it's like very good quality. It has a lining underneath as well, as you can see right here. And so you don't have to worry about some shirts like this that are this more sheer material. You have to worry about wearing an undershirt or something. And this you don't have to because it's all lined really well underneath. So those are two of the shirts that I had gotten. Well, I guess three of the same shirt. <laughs> and then I also got this one. I pulled this out of the laundry for you, okay? It was in the dirty clothes. <clears throat> Luckily it wasn't buried, but I really like this one. And this is the color I'm talking about. Like I get these kind of colors and this shirt over here, I'll show you in a minute. I like those kind of colors. And so yellow is very bright for me. I think it's fun, but I just don't wear it very often. And so here is this one. And this is like a short sleeve sweater, but again, it has a little bit of a longer sleeve, which is kind of what I look for. And I think this is a medium and I feel like it fits me pretty well. It's not as flowy around like the midsection. So it does show a little bit more in that area but it's not tight on me either. And it has some texture, it, I don't know if you can tell, a little bit like quilted and stuff. I think, did I go back and look at other colors because I liked it so much? I can't remember if I did or not, but this is the color I like the most, which is why I got this one. And I feel like even in summer, once it warms up, this is still fine. It's not like a heavy sweater material. You know, some of the short sleeve sweater Shirts are a lot heavier material. I feel like this is pretty lightweight and comfortable. And then the last shirt I wanted to share with you is this one. And this is from Hearts & Co. I've gotten a few shirts from them uh, or from her. I don't know a whole lot about her company, but Ashley from Grace & Grit will share stuff. And this is my favorite. I love this because it has more of like the V-neck like cut 
sweatshirt type thing. And then this blue is my favorite. It says home body, <laughs> which fits me perfectly. You've seen this one and this shirt in recent videos. I think my last few videos had me wearing these in them. So if you want to know kind of what they look like on, you can watch those. And I did get a large in this one. I'm not sure if these are available. I got them on a pre-order sale type thing. And that's what she does a lot. She'll, her new line, she'll have pre-orders for them. And so it takes a while for them to ship because she's just waiting for all the pre-orders to close and stuff like that. So I didn't check the website to see if they're still available, but I like all of her stuff. I think it's super cute. And um, there's a lot of homeschool related stuff as well. There's, I don't drink coffee, but there's a lot of like coffee mugs and different things like that also if you like that kind of stuff. But I really like this. And like I said, I got a large in this because I have some of her other sweaters and I really love them. They don't have the V-neck one, which I wish she had more. Maybe she'll come out with more that have a V-neck, but some of her other just like crew neck sweatshirts I have and I really, they're really good quality. But those are a unisex like sweatshirt. So I get a medium in those and they fit me fine. This one is a women's sweatshirt. And so it's a little bit more fitted. It's a little tighter on me through the shoulders. So I got a large and it's not like uncomfortable tight. It's just, again, it's a little bit more fitted since it's a women's shirt instead of a, like just a unisex shirt. So just if you do order something, that's just good to know. And then something else with just clothing is shoes. I don't really like shoes at all. <laughs> I just, I prefer being barefoot or wearing flip flops. But when I found out I had plantar fasciitis and you know, like January it started. And then a few months ago when I was trying to figure out stuff with my ankle and stuff, I learned more about it. And the podiatrist gave me a list of like better shoes to wear. And I already had some tennis shoes that I wear working out, but <laughs> that's, that's the only time I wear them is working out. And so I was like, okay, I need to invest in some better shoes. And I did get some sandals. I got some Birkenstocks and some Chacos, Chacos, however you say it, I don't know. <laughs> and, <clears throat> excuse me, I've been wearing the Birkenstocks mostly just around the house. The look of them is not my favorite, <laughs> but they help my foot feel better. I haven't worn the Chacos. I still have them in a box, but I'm that'll be like my shoe outside during the summer. But the other shoe I did get was some Hoka's. And again, all these shoes that are like good for your feet are expensive. <laughs> and so I'm a person that has <clears throat> like no shoes in my closet. I have, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is having a problem right now. I have uh, like my sandals, a few like flip flops, and then a few pairs of church shoes and some winter boots and some tennis shoes. <laughs> I'm just not one to collect shoes. I just don't really like it. And I am at home most of the time, so there's just not really a point to having lots of shoes. <laughs> what am I gonna do with them? Except, you know, spend tons of money on them. And so buying all these other shoes that are good for my feet <laughs> was a little hard for me because I'm like, they're expensive. <laughs> And so I got, these are the Bondi ones. I think, I don't know if that's how you say it, but that's what, that's what they are, B-O-N-D-I. And I just got black and white. I know they have so many colors. I'm just not that person. I just don't like super colorful shoes. I like more of a natural or black type of a shoe, you know, something that's not super in your face crazy. And so I've been liking these a lot. They are, it takes some getting used to. Their base is very wide and high. So I'm pretty tall. Like I'm about the same height as my husband normally when we're barefoot. So then I wear, I've been wearing tennis shoes so much and I'm <laughs> just like so much taller. And especially with these, the heel on them is pretty, pretty big. And like I said, you have to get used to walking in them because it makes your foot wider, but I feel like it also offers more stability. That way it gives me like a wider base, right? So they've been good so far. I've really been liking them. And even though the price tag is very high, I feel like they're very good quality and they're lighter weight, which is nice because then there's not as much weight on my ankles as I'm walking and that, that just makes a big difference for me. All right, the next thing I was gonna share you, with you is some hair products. So the first thing is this Conair uh, curling wand. 
And I showed this in a like my summer haul video. I hadn't actually used it at that point, but I have used it now a few times as you can see. If you've noticed, my hair's been a little bit curly in the last few, video few videos. <laughs> Some of them it's been straight, but some of it's been curly. And if you've been around here, I've mentioned before that I my hair down kind of bugs me and it still bugs me. Like it just, I don't like it in my face. I don't like have to worry about it when I'm eating my food and stuff. So a lot of times it's back in a ponytail or like off to the side in a bun. And I've been trying to have it down a little bit more <laughs> and just get used to it a little bit. But I, my hair does not hold curls super well. It's extremely thick and it's extremely heavy. And so usually it just kind of falls out, but this one's actually been working pretty well. And I like the shape of the curls. It has other wands in here that you can attach. So this is the one inch, but it has one to one and a quarter cause it's tapered. And then a really teeny one, which I think would be so fun to try and have like super, super kinky curls, but I don't have time for that. <laughs> I'll have to set aside some time to try it because this hair, like just doing it like this, and this was quick this morning when I did it, I did it super quick. Still took like 25 to 30 minutes for me to curl my hair because it's like when I think I'm almost done, this, this section right here is like four more divisions here <laughs> to get it all curled. It's so much hair, which I'm grateful for, but that's one of the reasons I just don't curl it. It just takes way too long. But I've really been impressed with how well this curling wand like holds the curls. It's been really great. I have some other ones and I don't feel like my hair holds those curls as well. And then something else about this was that this <laughs> button, <laughs> The only thing that's kind of weird to me that's hard is where the on button is because I hit it all the time. When I'm holding this, first I hold the curling wand down here. I just need to get used to holding it up here. But I hit the button, so sometimes I change the temperature. <laughs> so there's that. But for, it's like $30 or something. It's Con Air and I feel like it works really well. For something that's not $30, <laughs> I like to straighten my hair. So this is the uh, Babeless, is that how you say the brand? I think so. But this is their straightener. This one can also be used to curl as well. It has the rounded edges. But the story behind this one, again, the price point on these is extremely different. <laughs> and they have some that are cheaper than this one. But I had had the straightener that I had <laughs> before this one. I don't even know what brand it was. It was from Sally's Beauty and I got it Oh my goodness, how old was I when I got it? Like 21, I think. And so it's not been 20 years quite, but pretty close. And I was just like, okay, I need something else. My hair has a natural wave to it, especially underneath in the back. So it's really hard to blow dry it completely straight. And so trying to straighten it with a straightener, I needed something that was like for thick, really thick hair that has some wave to it. So my, the person I have cut my hair suggested this. This is the kind that she uses in her salon as well. And so I've been trying it out. Like I bought it, not just trying it out. That makes me sound like I'm gonna return it or something or renting it. But I have actually been really liking it. And even though it was very expensive, I have thought that it like works really well. My hair straightens really well with it. So that's what I got. <laughs> even though it was expensive, but I, I like how this one was cheaper. So, you know, we're trying to balance it out here. So that one was more expensive and this one was cheaper. So we bought a lot of expensive things recently, but a lot of them I just never have had in the past or they're several, several, several years old. So it was kind of time for replacements. And then the last thing in the mom cat category was some bowls. <laughs> this is another thing that we hadn't gotten new bowls really since we got married um, like 15 years ago. We got some plastic bowls and things as part, you know, people giving gifts to us. And I, they still worked well. They were stained and old and some of them were melted from hitting, being too close to the burner. And so I was at Hobby Lobby with my kids. They wanted some clay and I saw these bowls. So I'm not gonna be able to link the bowls because <laughs> they're from Hobby Lobby. They were in their spring section. So maybe they still have them, I don't know. But I really liked this set. This kind of replaced a bunch of my mixing bowls that I had. So there's three bowls in here. I like the, the colors and then the pattern. 
you know, with the half dips look, I don't know. And then they have the little like suction on, it's not suction, but you know, it keeps it from slipping on the table. So I've been using these and I've really been enjoying them. And then I was also looking for a bowl that would be good for sourdough. I've seen some um, on Instagram that people make or have made for their like sourdough company or whatever, you know, their sourdough Instagram. And they're extremely expensive and I was like, I am not spending that much. So I saw these mix, they're not just mixing, they're not really mixing bowls, they're what do you call them? A salad bowl, <laughs> like a presentation bowl, right? When you put your food in to be served, a serving bowl. There you go. <laughs> I knew we'd get there eventually. <laughs> so this is like a serving bowl, but it's like such good quality. It's like a stone type. It's, they're so heavy, but I think for two of them, since it was also like 40% off of their spring collection was maybe 20 something dollars. I don't know, way cheaper than like the 150 or whatever for one bowl. And they are like heavy and you can use them for sourdough. I like the depth, you know, for mixing the sourdough and stuff in them. But like I said, they can be used as a serving bowl as well. So they have a lot of possibilities and I really like them as well. And then the last thing I saw when we were at Hobby Lobby was these, they're, they're not bowls and they're not plates. They're like in between, which I really like because sometimes, you know, it's not like you're eating soup or like a huge salad, but you're also not just, don't want it just on a plate. You want a little bit of a like edge. And they're also really, really pretty presentation bowls. And so you can put, like if you have a bowl like with rice and a protein and the toppings and stuff, I feel like it's just really good. Like, I think there was another color besides just these two. And they did have normal plates and stuff to go with them, but I didn't get those. We have lots of plates and the plates had a lip on them as well, which we only have so much room in our dishwasher for dishes that are that wide. <laughs> And my kids' plates already have that big lip on them, and so we just don't really have room for something that's not flat on the edge for a plate. But I really love these. So you'll have to check out Hobby Lobby if you live close to one because I can't link these. You know, Hobby Lobby is basically if it's in the store, then you can get it. Some things are online, but just not a whole lot of options. But I'm really loving all these bowls. Okay, now the homeschool stuff. Like I said, I don't have a ton of things to share with homeschool, but these were just a few things that stood out. The first one is stickers. I found these on Amazon. I was looking for stickers that were raised a little bit because it makes it easier for my toddler to pull them off by himself. So when we're doing group work or something and sitting at the kitchen table, I'm not having to read and pull stickers off while I'm trying to focus on what we're reading. And so I give him one of these and some days he likes them more than others. He kind of goes through different spurts of what he likes and what he doesn't. So these ones all came in a pack like a huge pack. And then these ones are slightly like different texture, but they also have a paper that sits behind them that has a scene on it. So if they wanted to put the different stickers in the scene, they could do that. And the same with this, right? There's the paper behind that has some like roads and things like that. And so they can put them on that scene if they want to do that. So that's something that we've been using to try to occupy the toddler. And then something else is just, crayons. <laughs> it's kind of boring, I know. But again, I have been in, like, he's really been liking to color all of a sudden. And so this has been something important for us. So this is the Melissa and Doug. We have a smaller one that has bigger crayons in it as well. But I just grabbed this one and this one has a variety of colors. You know, some of them are lost already. Some of them are broken, but that's life. But I like how they don't have the paper on them. I know sometimes that keeps kids occupied for a really long time but it also can make a really big mess. So I like that. And then these ones are, they're honey something. I'll put them down below the brand. I can't remember exactly what it's called and I don't have them in the original box, but they're a little chunkier of a crayon and they actually color a little bit better than these ones. I don't remember if these are like the pure wax, which they color, but you just have to have the right paper and the right like, surface underneath otherwise they just don't color as well so he likes these ones i think better because they're a little bit more vibrant on the page so those are his things those are things that have been keeping him occupied so we can actually do homeschool and then the next thing i have mentioned this in some other videos 
but my kids have really liked this geography trivia challenge. We have the science one. I think there's an animal one, something like that. We haven't used that one, but they've really been liking this one. And we haven't been as good about playing it the last few weeks, but we were playing it somewhat frequently. And some of the science and the geography one overlap a little bit, you know, because when you're talking about how land looks or things like that, you get similar things in both science and geography. So anyway, some of the things help when they're doing one and the other, but they have really been enjoying this game. And so I thought I would just share it with you if you're looking for a geography game. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is woobles. <laughs> so I'm gonna pull this one out for you to see. This is one of the kits and I don't know who this is for. I just had gotten one. And so maybe I'll let them buy it from me or use it as a birthday present. I'm not really sure. My kids have been loving crocheting. Well, at least my older two, my other, my younger ones would like to crochet, but it's also just kind of hard sometimes <laughs> to learn to crochet. And so they've really been enjoying these. These are, like I said, they're expensive. If I didn't say that, maybe I didn't, but they, these kits are expensive. They've also been doing the um, I don't even know how to say it. I shared it recently in something else. I can't even remember what it was. But they've been making, my daughter has been crocheting other figurines, like the Japanese, it's a Japanese name. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. And she's been liking those. The thing with this is the yarn that you buy with it. This kit comes with the yarn, but if you get a book that's separate and you buy the yarn separately, it's like more nylon material than acrylic and it's a little bit easier I feel like to use. Acrylic can fray or your needle goes through the middle of it a lot of times. And so this, is, this has been good. I feel like it's easier to use besides the fact that it's expensive. So I thought I'd share that because crocheting, crocheting woobles, just crocheting in general, has been something they have absolutely been loving. So if you can find resources for your kids for crocheting, I'm sure they'll love it as well. It's just a fun thing for them to do and it gives them like their hands something to do and it, it passes time. You know, they can do it while they're watching something. Maybe if they're a little fidgety and it's hard for them to focus, maybe they need something like that to do. So I'll link some of our favorite things down below that I found off of Amazon for crocheting. All right, so those are some of my current favorites. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment down below and let me know what some of your favorites are currently. I would love to hear, and remember to give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you next time.